Peace and blessings, everybody. I'm Melissa Renee with BellaMinded.com, and um, I typically do messages of the day on TikTok, but I wanted to expound more on a particular message um, for those who may have more questions like me, and that's what I'm about to do. Um, pull some cards ask the most high and our spiritual guides more questions in regards to this message and how it can help us. Uh, I am going to give a disclaimer, however, that I am or nor do I claim to be an intuitive reader, nor am I a tarot or tarot reader. I am just guided with or by message using my star code astro oracle cards as well as my intuition that god gave me that gift he gave me i'm using so i guess in a sense i will be an intuitive reader i'm going to get in the habit of that i'm going to you know stop saying i'm not and i'm going to start saying i am i am an intuitive reader i am not a tarot or tarot reader Okay, so I'm going to shuffle these one more time while I talk about the message I'm going to get into. So I did a message of the day the other day, um, yesterday, as a matter of fact, in the first house, which is entrance, came upside down. And the fourth house came in right side up, which is uh, the fourth house represents your home. <clears throat> and the first house represents, you know, your self-image, our self-expression, our personality, etc. And uh, with that message, I was definitely getting the energy of healing our wounded inner child because the day before that, we got the wounded healer, the Chiron card and I felt that message leaned into a message yesterday and then before that it was a message of vision and what I got from that energy with all of those cards is basically was the energy uh, is telling us the spirits the most high is telling us that we have a lot of work to do in regards to some spiritual work which is going to be that healing that inner wounded child so that we can really pursue our vision and really see our visions come into the light, come into fruition. And um, I had a previous reading that I expound on the vision reading and it talked about in that reading, uh, the message talked about cutting kar karmic patterns and it really kind of leaned into basically the home card. So let's get into it. I just want to further get into this uh, message because some people might not know like, okay, I need to heal that inner child. That inner child needs your attention, needs your nurturing. How do we do that? Like, how do we start to heal that inner child? So that's the first question I'm going to ask our spiritual guides in the most high. How do we heal our inner child so that we may be able to go forward and pursue our visions and see them come into fruition? How? Where do we start? Where do we begin to heal that inner child within us, that wounded inner child? And I take heed to these messages too. So I'm not above reproach. These messages aren't just for you. They're for me too. And I do have my joy and happiness candle burning. Hope it's still burning. No, it went out. All right, she's burning again. Let's go. We need some joy and happiness. We need that inner child, that innocence, that pureness, that joy and that happiness from a happy, well nurtured, supported, protected inner child.
so the card that pulled up was partnership. Juno, partnership. So we already know this has something to do with partnering. So I'm asking how to heal. How do we start to heal that inner wounded inner child? And it's talking about partnership. It's talking about partnership. So let's pull another one and then I'll just see, pull two more and I'll just read them all. Or better yet, better yet, let's just read this one. Jew no partnership. And this is the first time this card, I believe, this card came out for me. I don't think I've ever read this card. So I'm not familiar with this card. Okay, so Juno is actually an asteroid. I didn't know that. So it says the asteroid Juno points out how you may have been trained to choose between love and work and offers clues on how to balance them instead. This asteroid was named after the daughter of Saturn, wife of Jupiter and mother of Mars. She is queen, the organizer of society. And she rules the roost. Juno and Jupiter modeled an uneasy but equal partnership that took a look, took a lot of work and had great rewards. Hmm. So. Hmm. Okay. So let's read the action. In work and love, Juno wants you to trust that you can hold steady on your life's path and develop equal partnerships. So get in there and wrestle to make the relationship work. Research healthy relationship skills and study and study negotiation and meditation techniques. Practice respect, communication, love, and conflict resolutions between the various facets of your own personality. Like Juno and Jupiter, strive to become two whole empowered souls who can express their individual potential, work around each other's foibles, and find balance. Be responsible for your own connection to the creative source, spirit, and your emotions. Don't ask another to carry your heart for you as it makes it hard to accept the unique path. Live out your ambition through your own work rather than through your mate, children, employees, or coworkers. If you do so, you can encourage others' growth and exploration along with your own and so create the foundations of great relationships and a sense of community. If you, do, if you don't, you can devolve into jealousy or create monsters. If you want to be in a partnership but are not, examine any belief or training that said you have to give up what matters to you in order to partner up. If it's your choice to work alone, accept it. If not, expand the view and invite fresh possibilities. So the gift in this message, because it came right side up, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, is true partnership is a spiritual path. It's sacred acts or the practice of healthy relationship skills. These skills begin within. I read that again. The true partnership is a spiritual path. It's sacred acts or the practice of healthy relationship skills. These skills begin within. Now, even though this is saying partnership, <clears throat> I'm going to tell you what the energy I'm getting. I'm getting that these two birds are you. You. In so many ways, this is your inner child. This is you. This is your inner child. This is you. This is your spirit. This is your flesh. <clears throat> so I think the partnership has more to do with you. That's the energy that I'm getting. Um, I'm getting that you're going to or we 
are going to have to find the balance. So when I ask, like, where do we start in in healing this inner <clears throat> wounded child? How do we start in paying attention to this inner wounded child? And it says partnership. You know, it says that you're going to have to. When it says strive to become two whole empire empowered souls who can express their individual. That's what stood out to me that made me feel like this energy has more to do with you and the duality that's going on within with this inner wounded child and yourself. And it's saying like Juno and Jupiter strive to become two whole empowered souls who can express their individual potential, work around each other's foibles and find balance. So you're going to have to go within, do the spiritual work by actually acknowledging your inner wounded child. So maybe that's the first step, acknowledging your inner wounded child. Tell your inner wounded child, listen, I'm here. I see you. I see the hurt. I see the trauma. I see the issues. Acknowledge them. Acknowledge them. Y'all are together in this. Y'all are partners in this. Let your inner wounded child know you are here. We are in this together. We are going to work together to get through this. We're going to work together to get through this. I'm going to let you know I am here for you. I spoke about this. Uh, ooh, I just got, I just got chills. I'm sorry, y'all. I just got chills. I spoke about this um, a long time ago uh, when I did a vlog in regards to like full moon and the new moon. And one thing I talked about was how I would have to be the mother and mother that inner wounded child, I was going to have to let my inner wounded child know that I'm here to take care of them. I'm here to uh, protect them, to love them, to do what they, what I need to do so that that child in me knows that you're safe, you're okay, I got you. So I feel like that's what this partnership is saying. The first thing that spirit is wanting us to do is um, they want us to work together with our inner wounded child. They want us to partner with our inner wounded child because it's things that we can learn from that inner wounded child and then there's things that that inner wounded child can learn from us. See, when we heal that inner wounded child, she or he is gonna be able to uh, reciprocate and pour back into us. That's where that fun child like loving comes from. And they're going to be able to do that in return. So the first thing we need to do is partner with them. We need to acknowledge them. We need to let them know that we're here. We need to let them know that we're in this together and they're not alone. Acknowledge them. They're not alone. We're partners in this. That's what I feel like. So what else? Let's ask, what else? So recognizing them, letting them know that you're there. Letting them know that you're not going to leave them alone. You're not going to abandon them. That you are definitely ready to take on this journey. So stop avoiding them. Stop acting like they're not there. They're not present. Stop acting like that they don't uh, hold weight and have an effect on what goes on in your present tense, present day life. Okay? Y'all are in this together. That's what I get with partnership. We're in this together. That's what I hear spirit saying. We're in this together. We're in this together. Yes, yes. Oh. Second thing, investigate. Scorpio is giving us to investigate. So, First thing spirit's telling us to do is to acknowledge. Is to acknowledge. Is to let your inner child know we're in this together. You're not alone. Next is to investigate. 
Now, with this being Scorpio, it's upside right, so it's a gift. But this being in Scorpio is telling us to investigate. We already know Scorpio is very deep. Okay, Scorpio is very deep. Scorpio ruling planet is Pluto. We know Pluto is about what? Transformation. Rebirth. Okay, it's about looking at those those traumas and triggers you we don't want to look at it's about looking at those deep wounds that we don't want to face so i already know right now that this sign right here is telling us to investigate we're gonna have to dig deep we're gonna have to research because sometimes sometimes what ends up happening is we go through a lot of trauma we go through a lot of things as children and for one as children we forget things we forget things. Uh, I believe they say you don't come into your uh, you don't come into real consciousness until you're about seven. So that's why sometimes from seven on down. Or from six on down, things are a little iffy about your upbringing. Things could be a little iffy. So just imagine it's a lot of things you're not going to remember between the ages from, from when you're born up until maybe when you're like six years old because you don't really develop and come to full consciousness until you're seven. So imagine those things that happen to you that you don't want to remember. It was that triggering or traumatizing for you. So you probably suppressed it and you don't even remember it. And what spirit is saying is that you're going to have to dig that up. You're going to have to remember. Because that's why you're ignoring your inner child. That's why you won't work together with your inner child, your inner wounded child. You're ignoring her. You're ignoring him because you're not investigating. You're not digging past and digging deep on those those issues those those events that you've suppressed in your life you might have a little a, a, a little glimpse of it but it's something bigger it's a full scope that you need to get it's a full scope of something that you have blocked you're only getting a tidbit you're not getting the full picture you're not getting the full picture and you need to investigate that. That's going to that's gonna be the second thing that's going to help you heal that inner wounded child. But I'm going to still read it. So let's go on and let's read this uh, Scorpio. <clears throat> um, Scorpio. It says Scorpio asks you to dive down and reach into the wellspring of your soul. Scorpio symbols are the eagle and the scorpion as this sign invokes both, both the soaring heights of the eagle's perspective and the scorpion's ability to burrow under the rocks of the psyche or culture. The fixed water sign Scorpio is ruled by Mars in traditional astrology and co-ruled by Pluto in modern astrology. It is connected to the pelvis and the root chakra investigate get to the root so here's the action drop assumptions and ask questions be fascinated by a mystery dive deep into the well rather than settle for the surface look under rocks and be curious as this situation is going to require some research so to get to partnering and and uh, uh not partnering but when you get with your inner child is things that your inner child is is trying to tell you is trying to reveal to you and wants you to dig deep deep wants you to learn something pay attention to something own something understand something because that's going to be the key for you to heal so it says um take nothing at face value Probe the conscious and unconscious passion that motivate this situation. Be aware of the sexual dynamics in the room and what role they play. Look at worst case scenario so you can prepare and then feel safe enough to search for the best case scenario. Be ready to transform and transmute the situation. Distill the essence. Concentrate. Play your cards close to your chest. It's time to gather information. 
Get the facts. Work with the material and introspect. Listen to both the facts and to your own intuition rather than to other people's opinions. Share, okay, so Spirit said just now like, stop listening to the stories that your family trying to tell you. Not every family, but somebody trying to, somebody painted this story for you. Somebody told you this is the events of what happened. Somebody told you that that never happened. Somebody, somebody, somebody at home, your childhood family, because remember that home, a car came up and that's what we're dwelling. That's what we're not dwelling, but that's what we're probing more into. So somebody told you that it happened a certain way that it did not happen. Somebody told you what you said and the way you recalled it, somebody told you you wasn't telling the truth. Somebody told you you was lying and they lying. They not telling the truth. So stop leaning on that information because they don't want the truth to come out. They don't want you to know what really happened. They don't want you to know the truth. So you need to investigate. You That's why you need to go in. You need to partner with that inner child. You need to sit down like, the, like this car said, meditate. What did that car say? Let's go back. That card said, uh, it said, research healthy relationship skills. This is the relationship skills with your inner wounded child. And it says study, negoti negotiation, and meditation skills and techniques. Meditate. You're going to have to sit down. You're going to have to meditate. You're going to have to pray. Practice respect, communication, love, and conflict resolutions between the various facets of your own personality. So take a look at yourself. But you're going to have to do that meditation. You're going to have to uh, do that work because somebody is telling you you're going to have to investigate for yourself. Because somebody is painting a picture that something was one way when it really wasn't. It, it was really something else. So you just uh, settle for what was on the surface of what you got. And you didn't dig deep into that. Because if you had dig deep, you realize that some of that stuff ain't like it ain't adding up. Once you sit down and you start and you actually like investigate this stuff that they told you, that's what happened. When you investigate it, you get in yourself, you start probing for answers, you start looking, looking for answers, you start getting the evidence and the proof. And once you start putting it, you be like that, that didn't make no sense. That really didn't make any sense what you told me. And then you're going to start seeing the real truth. It's going to come up. Um, I'm sorry, that was just that that just came. <clears throat> it says share only when you are ready. So that stood out too. share only when you are ready. So when you got all the evidence and the facts and the understanding and the clarity that you need in investigating what you was told wasn't true or what you told what happened and it didn't really happen. Once you start getting that information then you'll be ready to reveal what you know. Don't go on hunches. If you're going to reveal it to them, like this is what it is. Or if you're not even revealing it to them, but if you just revealing it, however, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe you might write a book. Maybe you're going to write a book about what happened. Maybe you're, you're going to do a, a podcast and start talking about, you know, maybe that's the case. I don't know, but whatever information you have and the understanding you got about what went on with your inner child what went on in that childhood like only reveal the information when you are ready and when you are ready is when you have it all the bigger picture you have a full picture of what it is don't go in any sooner don't go in any sooner if you don't have that information because um they're gonna whoever it is they're gonna easily dismiss it they're going to easily find holes in it and try to dismiss it. Appreciate moments alone. If you learn to be comfortable alone, you will have more bargaining power in relationships. Within the depths of your soul is your connection to the infinite search for it. So 
that's basically spend time alone because you you need to be spending time with yourself that's you and that's you that's that inner child that's you that's that spirit that's that soul that's you this is who you need to be working on this is who you need to be partnering with yourself spend time alone with you understand and gain clarity with you this is how you're going to first start healing that inner wound and then you come in and you're going to ask the necessary questions that need to be asked start writing in your journal that's one thing i did i start writing in my journal and on events that i remembered and when i start writing in my journal on certain events that i remember i start remembering some other stuff and then it's cer certain other things started to be revealed to me like oh shoot okay i didn't even think about that and as i'm writing and constantly writing as my inner ch as i am p connecting with my uh inner wounded child because this is this is what they want you to do partnership connect connect with your inner wounded child as i'm connecting with my inner wounded child i'm starting to bring up things that i didn't talk about or even think about in a long time and as i'm writing this stuff out i'm starting to, it's starting to reveal more she's starting to reveal more things for me more things that i didn't pay attention to like oh man i didn't realize that i didn't realize that and it's starting to bring light to people in my life that I honestly, uh, even though I love them, but I honestly need to really thank them. Like thank them on a whole, like really, really thank them because that moment that was revealed to me, uh, that time that they were there and they were present, it showed me the difference from when they wasn't. It showed me the difference from when they wasn't. See, all of this came up. I didn't realize that. I didn't see it like that. So that's why it's important that you connect with that inner child and investigate. Okay, so it came up right side up and it says uh, transformation. Scorpio loans you the strength and curiosity to plumb the depths and face your monsters. This is what that that inner child wants you to do it wants you to use the energy of scorpio don't be scared she right there for you you right there for her or him go in face those ugly truths those demons those that those triggers and traumas that you did not want to face that you did not want to look at do it because that's going to be part of your transformation. You're going to heal, you're going to transform, and then you're going to be able to execute. You're going to be able to see that vision that you have way more clearly. I said that before. It's going to be so clear, clear as day, like blue clouds and, and the sun shining through these clouds. It's just going to break apart. Clouds going to break apart. The sun going to shine through. That's the analogy of how clear your vision going to be, how you going to have, how you going to execute that vision and how successful that, that, that vision is going to be for you. Okay. All right. Let's see. What's the next thing we need to do? Let's ask the most high. Sex spirit, what is the next thing that we need to do? So we know we need to connect with our inner child. We need to partner with our inner child. We know we need to investigate the things that our inner child holds, our inner wounded child holds, or wounded inner child holds. We need to investigate those things for ourselves because we don't know what we was being told. It's the truth. So once you investigate that, I'm going to pick this one. And I'm going to pick this one. So let's pick this one. Huh? Sensitize upside down. Perception, moon, both of these upside down. So it says sensitize. 
So one thing we know about Pisces is, you know, they're both Scorpio and Pisces are both water signs. And this is telling you to investigate. And this is telling you to sensitize. So with this sensitize in Pisces, it's upside down. So I don't know. I'm getting, we already know with Pisces, Pisces is dealing, Pisces is in the 12th house. Pisces has to do with uh, Neptune. So it's definitely uh, giving a uh, creative, giving imagination. Like maybe we can't reach this. It's giving a uh, creative, Pisces giving creativeness, imagination. Um, it is definitely dealing with the supernatural things outside of our uh, what's norm or the earthly realm, you know, the metaphysical, you know, going to that space and to that place. And it's upside down. So it could be challenging us by saying, you know, not to get too caught up. Or it could be saying that Maybe this is the energy of our inner child, imaginative, creative. Maybe that's being challenged and being blocked. And then the moon is the perception. So we know that moon, um, uh, the moon deals with um, our subconscious, how we feel how other people feel, I mean, well, not how other people feel, but our own emotions, being aware of our own e emotions, being aware of other people's emotions, um, our intuition, our psyche. So both of these came out and maybe we, this is blocking us. Maybe we have some work to do to be able to use our senses. Because this says sensitize and perception has is the ability to use your senses to be able to like gain a perspective of something, gain some understanding. So let me see. Let me get more clarity. Let me read what it says. So 12. It says the symbol for Pisces is two fish, usually swimming in opposite directions, as you can see. One is swimming up, one is swimming down. See how one is dark and one is light? Okay, it says Pisces rules the feet and resonates with wetlands streams and ponds ruled by expansive Jupiter in traditional astrology and by intuitive Neptune in modern astrology. Mutable water sign Pisces calls us to sense our dreams and intuitive perceptions for the trickles and streams of understanding. Let me say it says Pisces calls us to sense our dreams and intuitive perceptions for the trickles and streams of understanding. So I feel like it's kind of giving us the energy of like, maybe it's challenging us to once again, like this saying dig deep and it's saying, I guess dig deep into our feelings and our emotions because Pisces is a water sign. And Pisces <laughs> is a water sign and it has to do with feelings and emotions. And we, Pi I'm a Pisces. So Pisces and Cancers can get the reputation of being very emotional, but maybe the problem is we're not tapping into those emotions. So maybe we need to investigate and dig deep and maybe we need to investigate and dig deep we're not digging deep into those emotions and those feelings because those feelings, if we dig and investigate deep in those feelings, it could tell us like the thing, why we feel that way, what has happened in our childhood, why our inner, our wounded inner child uh, feels the way they feel. We investigate those situations, then maybe we can figure it out. So let's, let me, let me read, let's read. 
Pisces asks us to swim in the ambition pool of emotion and be moved to compassionate action. With Pisces, think of a vast watery landscape with streams meandering over fields through ponds and swamps where the different elements and diverse species flow together, together in one subtle, boundaryless, and fertile landscape. Appreciate all the diverse voices in this situation and take them as tributaries to your river. This complex ecology has so much more to say and is so much more robust than any simple monoculture. The situation you are facing is also subtle and complex, but that is its strength. This moment calls for finer perceptions, a more sensitive microscope. Be as aware of other people's feelings as you are your own, but know whose feelings are whose. Track carefully what you soak up from others and what is true to your own wellspring. Learn to honor a twin perception that we are both individual cells with our own work to do and that our cells are embedded in the body of creation. Healthy boundaries help us do our individual work. Spiritual practice can help us shift our perception from the cell mind to our role in the body of the one. So I just think it's just more get it, giving us more detail on what we need to be investigating. So, yeah, investigate what happened, what's going on, but maybe dig within those emotions and those feelings. So they're telling us where to investigate. So that's what spirit is telling us. So spirit told us to connect. Connect with our inner child. Partner with our inner child. Connect is what I get. And then it says, investigate, start investigating, start looking in, uh, uh, start maybe like I said, with what was told to you and it really didn't make sense or it's kind of like, huh, start investigating there. But now they're telling us where to investigate. So how, where you can start investigating of uh, revealing the truth about the matters and the things that happen in your childhood is to start with your emotions and your feelings. Like if you're angry, why are you so angry? Follow that anger trail, follow that anger trail back, follow it back to dig into like when you first got angry or when you first got in trouble for your anger or when you first can remember you lost complete control and your anger took over or start with, you know, your trick, like when you, why you get so triggered in crowded places? Like, when did that start? Was that something always there? At what point in time was these being in crowded places bothered you? And when you follow that trail back, maybe there's going to be your answer. That's where your answer is going to be. <clears throat> so I get it, spirit. It's saying investigate. Investigate those emotions, those feelings. It's going to help. It's going to get help you with the perception of things. It's going to help with that perception. Because... When you start digging deep and, uh, and unpacking those emotions that set you off, things that make you upset, things that trigger you to cry, things that make you feel anxious. Follow that anxiety. Where did that come from? Was you always anxious? Was you always anxious about that? Follow that. And when you follow these things, there's going to give you some of your answers, if not all of your answers. And it's going to change your perception of something because you've been looking at something one way. But once you dig deep in those emotions, so it came out as a challenge. So let's see what's the challenge here. Pisces permeability can leave you lost in a swamp. 
amorphous, wondering whether your sadness is your own or if it has been sponged up from your surroundings. Empathize with others, but don't try to carry everyone else's pain for them and double the burden. <coughs> Excuse me. So when you go and you start to investigate these feelings, these emotions, know the difference between or be able to separate the emotions of is, is this how you felt or this or was this a feeling that was projected onto you? Because that happens a lot of time when we grow up. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you could feel like men ain't shit, right? Men ain't shit. That is that how you really feel? Or if you fall, follow your resentment towards men, if you follow that trail, resentment towards men, you follow that back, maybe that's not how you feel. Maybe that's how your mom felt because of the issue she had with her your father or maybe it was because of the issue she had with her father and how she uh viewed the relationship her father had with her mother and then all of the messed up relationships she had in between that so when you grew up with her you constantly heard you constantly saw her project in her action that men wasn't she so now you have this resentment towards men that you believe came from you, but in reality, it came from your mother. So connect with your inner child, your wounded inner child, and investigate. Investigate these emotions, the emotions that trigger you, the emotions that get you anxious when you think about it, or get you triggered or you know what I'm saying like make you sad investigate well investigate the uh, the emotions of why you get sad why you get anxious why you get so upset investigate those emotions and when you investigate those emotions make sure that they're yours they came from you because that's where the perception comes from because then now to change your whole perception of Men, when you go down that little trail and realize that your resentment for men had nothing to do with your father, because when you start thinking about your father, well, I mean, no, my father wasn't with my mom, but whenever I called, like he answered, whenever I asked to, to be there, <clears throat> whenever I asked him to come get me, he would come get me. Whenever I wanted to see him, he would come see me. You know, uh, we would spend time with each other. And you might even, in spirit say, you might even find out that you may look at it like, well, we ain't spend as much time, but maybe you didn't spend as much time because it had more to do with your mom. Maybe your dad wanted to get you more often, but your mom wasn't, partic she wasn't uh, not participating, but she wasn't. Yeah, she didn't participate. She wasn't uh, going to make it easy. <clears throat> she wasn't going to make it easy. So, yeah. And at the same time, I feel like Spirit is saying, like, don't uh, investigate and tap into your emotions. That's where you're going to get some answers. But, um, no, be able to understand when you tap in these emotions, you're going to trail it back. It's going to let you know that if this is even something that came from you, are you holding on to some trigger and trauma that has anything to do with you? Or is it more coming from the people in your life projecting it onto you, your mom, your father, whoever raised you? Because we are talking about home. We are talking about family, the fourth house. So that's going to help you, but also don't empathize with that. So we use the mother for example, empathize with your mother because maybe your mother relationship, uh, maybe what she's seen between 
your grandfather and your grandmother or which would be her mother and her uh father maybe that wasn't so healthy maybe that affected her maybe that tainted her perception of men and then all the men around her and then she was choosing these type of men because she believed that's what all men do. So don't hold a grudge. Don't uh, get wrapped up when you start finding the truth and get wrapped up and now you have resentment towards your mom. We're trying to let that go. That's what your inner child wants you to do, heal. She or he's tired of being, you know, binded with 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 anger and resentment and hurt and pain. They want to be free. They want to be innocent. They want to be pure. They want to be lighthearted. They want to have fun. They want to be creative. They want to be imaginative. So don't hold on to that. Let it go. You're going to connect with the inner child by investigating uh, those wounds. And you're going to investigate those wounds because you're going to tap into those emotions and those feelings. You know, why you get upset when this happens? Why you cry when that happens? Why you get anxiety when this happens? You're going to investigate that. Those feelings, you're going to tap into those feelings. And then when you tap into those feelings, you're going to get an understanding of why you have those feelings. You're going to follow the emotional trail back to your childhood of why you get those feelings. And there you're going to get an understanding. You might have a different perception of why you had those feelings. Were they yours? Were they projected onto you? Was this somebody else's burden that you carried? Or did these things, did something actually happen? And why did these things happen? What does that say about the people around you? And it's saying, and confront them. Confront those feelings. Confront why you, the, what happened. Confront those events that happened to why you have these feelings. Confront it. And then when you do that, that's going to allow you to get to this whole thing that started it, this vision. This vision. Yes. I think that's all. I think that just kind of wrapped it up in a nutshell. Yes. Trying to see if it's anything that I'm missing. But do y'all see the duality? Like, that's you. Inner child. That's those, that's those deep hitting emotions that you've been suppressing. That's you. That's the deep hitting e emotions. That's you going toe to toe. Going toe to toe with, with, with the emotions, with the events that happen. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I gained what I needed to gain from that. I gained some understanding with that. So what I suggest for y'all to do for anybody out there, like seriously, like if if it's a lot to unpack on your own, um, even though it's telling you to investigate those feelings and tap into those uh, wounds of that inner child. Like if it's too much, get a therapist. Go talk to somebody because they can help you through those things if it's too heavy for you to do it on your own. Now, if you feel like you are capable of dealing with it on, on your own, like I said, the first place I started was like, you know, I started meditating and writing in my journal, you know, or praying and writing in your journal, like, you know, um, pray and then meditate. Cause sometimes like, I feel like 
uh, it was said a long time ago, a young lady said, when you pray, you asking questions. You asking the most high, you asking spirit, the universe, the question, the meditation is you're going to hear the answer back. You're listening for the answer. Prayer, you asking, meditation, you listening. So maybe you can start by just praying. Hey, you know, universe, most high, ancestors, whoever. I need some, some, some insight. I need to, I need to, I need some revealing right now on, you know, my inner child and my, where I was, how I was raised. I need some help with uh, gaining insight. I need some help in healing this inner child. I need some help with that. And then meditate and listen to, to what comes when you meditate. And then take a journal and start writing in that journal. Like you could just start from, you know, what you loved about your childhood. You know what I'm saying? Then go into what you didn't like about your childhood, things that you wish you could have changed, you know, um, uh, things you wish could have been differently. Why do you wish this could be differently? Like, and you'll be surprised, you know, what happens, you know, or like some people call it channel writing, just write, just start writing and see what comes out. Like, that can be the key first to like bringing certain things to your awareness because like i say we don't reach consciousness until we're seven so it could be a whole lot of things that we've suppressed or we forgot or we don't remember as children and uh these things could help bring the things we may have suppressed or forgot to the forefront to the light and reveal um those things for us so I hope this resonates for whoever it resonates for. If it resonated for you, please press the thumbs up button and share if you like. You can subscribe. And um, yeah, I think that's all. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all so much. And um, we're going to get to work. Peace and blessings.